one. What's up, bookies.com? Jasmine McCoy here, and I am joined by Brad Friedel, former U.S. soccer player. Brad, it's good to have you. Thanks for having me, Jasmine. Yes, and a big, big event coming up, the 2022 World Cup. We got to talk some soccer. First and foremost, um, speaking of World Cups, a big performance for you in the 2002 World Cup. You went on to become the second keeper in World Cup history to save two penalty kicks in a single tournament. Can you take me back to that moment in your career? Um. Yeah, so I'd been with the national team for a while. I had uh, played in two Olympics as well, and this was my third World Cup. Um, and a, a majority of our squad had played together by this time. And a lot of us were playing in uh, at clubs in Europe, but not just involved with them, but we were um, we were focal points of our teams. We, we were, um, it was the first time ever in U.S. soccer history that that had occurred. And I think it correlated onto the field. We had a really, a really strong group dynamic um i wouldn't say breezed through qualifying but qualified um quite early and uh and we just had a great team chemistry and when we got to, um when we got our group uh it was hard you know we had portugal who were one of the favorites that year um and we played uh south korea which was one of the home nations south korea and japan hosted it and they were uh, a very good side. They made it to the semifinals. And uh, Poland, too. And if you ever play a European uh, side, it's difficult in World Cup. And we got two of them in our group. And after 23 minutes or 26 minutes or something in the first game, we found ourselves 3-0 up against Portugal. And we just went from strength to strength. Um, we had some we had some wonderful players in that team. Um, if that, I think that was the best U.S. team ever assembled. Um, and this one is very strong as well that we have now. Um, it would be, uh, it, it would be, we'll have to see how they uh, do in the World Cup, of course, but I think that'd be one heck of a game uh, if the 2002 team uh, played against this uh, 2022 team. And we speak of those dates, Brazil, they're looking to win their first World Cup since 2002. You know, what are some other teams catching your eye this year? Uh, Argentina. Uh, and this is going to, well, I would assume it's going to be uh, Messi's uh, final foray into into a World Cup, um, and he is he has been you know the best, if, well, along with Ronaldo during his career. Um, so Argentina, I, Belgium has has some really good players. Um, but they don't they don't seem to get it together at the at the le- the last stages, but I think they'll be strong in the tournament. Um, Germany is always good in knockout competitions uh, and World Cup, and I like England as as a little bit of a of an outside favorite. You know, they um, they uh, they seem to lose in penalties a lot in uh, in these uh, not when they get to the quarterfinals, semifinals of these events. But um, but they're re- they got some really strong players, um, and I know they're under a little bit of pressure for what happened in their. Um, in the Nations League, I believe that's what they call it now in uh, in uh, Europe. So they um, they have uh, they have the players that can come through that pressure and perform and beat anyone on their day. So yeah, Brazil, Argentina, um, England, Belgium, uh, Germany. Uh, I think those are those are probably the favorites. And we talk about the United States, they're in group B, you know, your thoughts on this group and where the U S can stand. Okay. So the big game, the big game here, and I'm just going to bring up, I'm not going onto my phone. I'm just bringing up all the groups because I know you're going to ask me questions about the groups and I got all my photos here. (laughs) Uh, There we go. All right. Um, The big thing with, um, with this group is the first game, Um, the way that the draw was made. It is against Wales, and um, you can't lose it if you're the U.S., and you can't lose it if you're Wales. It, it, it's enormous. A draw still keeps you in the hunt, of course, um, but a loss re- really puts you um, behind behind the eight ball. So um, I think England is the favorites and should be the favorites in this group. However, um, I don't think Gareth Southgate will be that happy with the group either because he'll know if U.S. has all the players fit, he'll know that they're a force to be reckoned with. 
um, for Wales playing against England in a major event that just that game alone will be like a World Cup finals Wales. And whenever you have a player like Gareth Bale involved in a Welsh team or any team for that matter, just like he did with LAFC, he can he, he can pop up with incredible goals. Um, so you have, you know, one of the global stars in the Wales team and the team that everyone's writing off in this group is Iran and they're not easy to play against. They're very, they're very well structured. Um, and their players have a uh, very good technical ability. So that is by no means going to be an easy game for either the U S or Wales and England. If I'll put an asterisk next to England, I think if England goes into each game, um, with the full complement of players, with full concentration and playing to the best of their ability, then I think they they should win uh, or could. They have the potential to win each game. But if they drop even just a little bit, either three of the teams can take points off of them. And this group, it's a difficult group. We know that. And when we look at odds, you know, bookies, we're sports betting. We look at the U.S. team odds it's really 50-50, you know, what are your thoughts on them looking like that? And, you know, what are some things that you think the U.S. really needs to focus on if they want to pull it out? Um, they need to put a lot into this first game um, because it, it, a loss, and not just that you lose the three points, but you're it's almost a six-pointer because you're losing against the main the main rival in the group. Um, that's number one, the the confidence that it takes out of you um, to quickly have to turn around and play another game. Um, and I believe the second game is against England. Is that, is that accurate? Um, so I'll, if you can just double check that I didn't, I'm, I'm all focused on uh, <laughs> Wales, the, the yeah. Wales match right now. Um, but I do believe it's uh, England in the second match. If that's the case, you know, the world cup could be over before you know it. Because if you get zero points out of the first two games, um, then you're then you're done basically. So it's um, it, it's really important to put a lot into this into this first game. Um, and this Welsh team, what what I worry a little bit about is the American players. I'm not worried at all about their their commitment to the England match because they know that England's good. And they know that the world will be watching. They know. Um, that they're the underdogs. It's quite an easy game to mentally go into. Um, the game against Wales, I, I hope they don't feel overconfident um, about Wales because Wales is good. Wales, Wales is um, Wales is is physical. They're tech. They're technical, and they have um, players um, that are playing their club football at at a high level. You know, so um, you know, I think. I hope that the U.S. takes that game, you know, almost almost more seriously than the England game um, because it's the first one. If they get three points, then it'll boost the confidence massively. The England game will be a really enjoyable contest, and then uh, you know, focus again on trying to get three points against Iran, which will also be difficult. And we talk about you know Wales and their you know star player Gareth. Bale, I want to say is his name. Gareth Bale, correct. Yep. You know, when it comes to him, do you know, how do you think the United States can, you know, put a stop to him having a big game, especially on a big stage like this? Yeah. So I played with Gareth for a couple of years. Um, he, you have Lionel Messi and you have Cristiano Ronaldo. And then when Gareth was at the peak of his game, he was right underneath those two. That's how good he is. Um, really difficult to stop when he, is fully fit. Um, I, I, you know, he just scored the goal um, to equalize for LAFC, and and he's like six foot, like probably six one, six two, and he left over a six foot six inch defender to head the goal, like to head the ball in. Like he is, he can, uh, he's strong, he's powerful, he's good in the air, great strike of striker of the ball with his left foot. So, I would say the way to try to stop him is limit the service to him. Um, because once he gets in certain positions, it's difficult for the the best of defenders around the world to stop him. Um, they uh, Wales also has a, another very talented player that's been on the um, at, at top clubs in Aaron Ramsey, mm -hmm. and when he when he is at his top level game, he can run the center of midfield, 
um, in, in a very strong fashion. So it, it, um, they have those they have those two players that um, are amongst the elite in the uh, in the world. So it'll be it'll be a difficult game for the U.S. And then we, you know, already talked about Messi, Ronaldo. Those are some big names in soccer as well. You know, any other guys, you know, World Cup overall that you think could possibly make some headlines as well? I, um, I've i been watching uh, for a while now. Obviously, I follow the Premier League um, intimately. Uh, Foden, who plays at Manchester City, I think this could be a breakout World Cup for him. And the young player, uh, the winger at Arsenal, Saka, he is in Arsenal's top of the league in the Premier League right now, and he is he has started absolutely on fire in the Premier League this year. Um, this could this could really be a breakout uh, breakout time for him. Um, I'm guessing from what I'm hearing with the squad with the U.S. I know he's not young, um, but uh, if Matt Turner is fit and gets a call in goal, um, he's a tremendous shot stopper uh, and. You know, somebody like him could really get into the uh, into the eyes of uh, the global audience if he has a very good game. Because the U.S. is going to need whatever goalkeeper starts. The U.S. is going to need that goalkeeper to play well because he will have to make he will have to make some saves. Uh, there's, there's no way that the U.S. is going to play these three teams and not concede some chances. Um, you know, so. Uh, so Foden, Foden, Saka, Turner, those are those are three uh, that I'll be keeping an eye on that um, that haven't really been on the international stage too much in in large events. And we talk about the pressure for U.S. and goalkeeping. Something that you did, you know, how much pressure comes with being a goalkeeper? Well, it's a little bit different now, like because we're wow, it's already twenty years since two thousand two. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, that, Playing for the U.S. back in when I was playing, it was much less pressure than playing in the Premier League. It was actually it was actually it was really nice. You come back, um, the country is building. We're still building, but the journalists weren't really out to get you. Um, the social media and the fans weren't really out to get you. Um, everyone wanted us to do well to build the sport in the U.S. So. Uh, pressure that you had you put on yourself yeah you you put demands and you set goals for yourself um but you didn't have a lot of uh issues with social media back then you didn't have if any at all you, you didn't have um you know too much negative press from your from your own country's press if we're if somebody was playing in another country and and underperformed and that country's press may write something but not we're, we're not under the pressure like the english players are as soon as their names are on that squad list their whole life turns upside down for you know for the next 30 days um and and so i always found i always found going into the u.s a, a welcome release from the day-to-day -day pressures of the premier league mm -hmm. um so it, it, i i kind of viewed uh, penalties in the same manner it's it's the one time in a game where a, if the goal goes in the goalkeeper generally doesn't get blamed for it so you're at a no-lose situation so you shouldn't have any pressure put on you um now 2022 it's different because mls has grown the fan base has grown the national team fan base has grown social media has grown um, the press and the educated press has grown in the U.S. The edu the fans are far more educated. So now I can understand going into this, how, how these players will get scrutinized by their own fans now, be under a little bit more pressure. So I would say it's a lot more similar to it just, just my experience from when I played in the Premier League as opposed to uh, the national team. I'd say, I would say... Um, the most difficult thing as a goalkeeper is to overcome your mistake. Mm. All the goalkeepers in the World Cup are good. There's there's not a bad one. There's not a bad team really in the in the World Cups anymore. Um, the what separates the top goalkeepers, Allison, Oblak, uh, Oblak, Ederson, Neuer's, um, Courtois, what separates them, Hugo Lloris, from from the others, is 
um, and Emmy Martinez in Argentina is when they do make the mistake, you don't even realize because it happens and then they just get on with it and they play as per normal. Mm -hmm. um, it's not an easy thing to do and that's why they're the best. Uh, and it'll be interesting to see if Turner does get his call. What happens if he makes a mistake? Doesn't mean he's a bad goalkeeper because he's a good goalkeeper. Mm -hmm. uh, it's how he deals with that. And I think that is the pressure um, that is the most difficult as a goalkeeper to deal with. Mm, well, very well said. And, you know, you talk about that and battling that, but on the upside of things, you know, what is it like playing in one of the best, you know, well-known, everyone's watching you tournaments in the world? It's an incredible feeling. It, it is. Like when you when you get the call that you've made the team or if it's a face-to-face -face meeting, um, I guess everyone does it a little bit different. Uh, it's exciting, but it doesn't feel like anything just yet. When you land in the country of where the World Cup is, it, it's there's, uh, I mean, probably cliche, there's no other feeling like it in, in uh, sport, in football. Um, it'd be very similar to walking out and do Super Bowl, I guess, if you were an NFL player, you know, not just a league game, like, the, you know, every game at the World Cup is a special, is a special event. And when you, when you line up in the tunnel, um, you know, and you, the adrenaline's going and the nervous energy is going and it, no matter what team you're playing, you look, you look across and you have a world or a world all-star or world all-stars that you're facing. And it, it's it's just it's remarkable to try to pit your talent up against them. So it it um, it's the pinnacle of players' careers. Uh, they should uh, they should know that it's an honor to be part of it. Um, but then once that nervous energy goes and the national anthems are played, then you got to focus and you got to perform well. Man, well, the action will begin for the U.S. November 21st with that first game. Brad Friedel, thank you so much for joining us, and we look forward to speaking with you again soon. Thanks, Jasmine.